Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship this day. I want to welcome all of you, whether you are, are visiting with us today or whether you've uh, been here for a long, long time, to each and every one of you, I say welcome. Um, I say let us come. Let us really feel the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in this time as we gather to worship. Good morning, will you please stand and join me in the call to worship. We are people of God's amazing love. We are, we are here, here to, to love, love others as we are loved and to live into the dream of building a loving community. We are people of God's justice and mercy. We are here to forgive others as we have been we are people of God's incredible joy. We are here to serve and sing, hope and pray, worship and praise God. Please join me in hymn number 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Generous God, we praise you for all your gifts to us, for the gift of courageous people whose knowledge of you has helped them change the world. Particularly, we thank you for those servants like Martin Luther King Jr. and others whose prophetic witness has challenged and moved us closer to your kingdom. We, we give, give thanks, thanks for the opportunity, opportunity to come together as your people and to worship you. Help, help us in this time to hear your word and be not afraid to stand up and live out our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us greet one another as a sign of God's peace here to stay.
Amen. I want to invite our children forward for our young disciples' time. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Oh, there she is. All right. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. Yeah. So today I wanted to ask you, what's a hero? What's a hero? Ma'am? Someone that flies around and fights monsters. Flies around and fights monsters. What's a, what, what else is a hero? Yeah. People who save other people. Yeah. Anything else about a hero? Do, helping, so they help people. Do you want to be like a hero? Yeah. yeah. So let's look at some pictures up here. You tell me if, if they're a hero. Is that a hero? No. No, who is that? Yeah. yeah. He's not a hero? No. no. He's, a He's a sponge. <laughs> well, you don't get more than that. How about that? Are they heroes? Who's that? Mom and a dad. Are moms and dads heroes? Yeah. Yeah? Because you want to be like your mom and dad? Because they help? Yeah, okay. <laughs> we got more enthusiasm for SpongeBob. <laughs> Did you notice that? Who's that? He's a hero. Yeah, he's a hero. <laughs> so Brett Favre. <laughs> Air, oh, Aaron Rodgers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Holy cow. Martin Luther King. Was he a hero? Yeah. So why is he a hero? What's he doing? Yeah, so he wanted, he wanted everybody to be... Yeah, so his birthday is tomorrow. We celebrate. He wanted people to be, to be equal, right? There was a time when people were treated pretty, pretty poorly, right? Because of the color of their skin. Yeah, and so he stood up to do that. So is he a hero? Yeah. Who's that? Is Jesus a hero? Yeah, why is Jesus a hero? Yeah, you know, he does all the things you said. He helps people. Does he save us? Yes. Oh, you bet he saves us, right? And uh, do we want to be like Jesus? Yes. Yeah. And, and you know what? Jesus is, is Jesus our greatest hero? Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. He is. He is. He's our greatest hero that we have. And growing to be like him every single day. Is that something we should be doing? Yes. Yeah. To love people and, and, and forgive people and, uh, and share with them that love of God and, and, um, and be with them? Is that something we should do? Yeah, You're, you bet it is. That's right. And when we do that, does it change the world? Yeah. Can it? You're right. It is. Yeah, when we looked at Martin Luther King Jr., he believed a lot. And it was because of that that he changed the world. So I want you guys to think about your heroes you have, but I want you to think about Jesus as your hero and what that means in your life and being like him. So let's, let's say a prayer. Oh God, we thank you for all the, the heroes in our, in our life, but most of all for Jesus Christ, who is that one that we, we seek to seek and strive to be like each and every day, to live out his love and be like him. Be with these young disciples, watch over them throughout this week. Bring them back safe again. Amen. All right, everybody, thank you. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 6 through 9. The branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf 
and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. It's printed there in your bulletin, and I invite you to stand for the hearing of our gospel lesson this morning. Hear these words from our gospel of Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. May God add his blessing to our, our hearing and living out of the word this day. You may be seated. <clears throat> Typos, sometimes they're wrong words, sometimes they're just the wrong words put together. Either way, when you read them, something just doesn't seem to sound quite right. Take, for example, these announcements that were put in church bulletins. The peacemaking scheduled for today has been canceled due to a conflict. <laughs> Don't let worry kill you off. Let the church help. <laughs> Next Thursday, there'll be tryouts for the choir. They need all the help they can get. Here's another one. The ladies of the church have cast off clothing of every kind. They may be seen in the basement on Friday afternoons. My favorite, this evening at 7 p.m., there'll be a hymn sing in the park across from the church. Bring a blanket and come prepared to sin. <laughs> so when we read those statements, they make us chuckle, right? And in our gospel lesson today from Matthew, when we hear what is known in this beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, these verses that we um, heard read from Matthew called the Beatitudes, they sound so counterintuitive, right, that we figure, well, there's got to be some kind of misprint here somewhere. I mean, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are those who mourn. Really? What is so great about mourning or persecution? And, and this is why the Beatitudes, in their immediate reaction, catch us off guard. Because there is a lot of deep meaning behind these deceptively simple statements. That in our poverty of spirit and our meekness and our hungering for justice, there's an opportunity for God to do amazing things in and through our lives. There's a story of a young man going to an elderly monk and asking the question, Master, how can I be fulfilled? How can I find peace? I've studied the sacred scriptures. I've visited the, the great teachers in the land. I've prayed daily, and I've not found the answers. Please, teach me the way. At this point, the monk served tea to his guests, and he poured his visitor's cup full, and then he kept on pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring so that the tea came up and over the rim, and then it spilled over and across the table and down to the floor until tea was cascading all over and everywhere. And the young man watched until he couldn't restrain him, and he said, it's over full. Stop. No more will go in. Like this cup, the monk said. You are full of your own opinions and speculations. How can I show you the way unless you first empty your cup? In the Beatitudes, we find our blessing comes when we approach them as empty vessels. When we come to those times of mourning and those times when our spirits are hurting and our hearts are heavy, it is in those times that when we come and we surrender. When we come and we let go of the hurt and the pain and our attitudes and our actions and we give them to God in trust and in faith, 
that we find that our hearts and our lives are overflowing with hope and new life. Because Jesus did not say in here, blessed are all those who have it all together. Jesus did not say, blessed are those who have all the right answers. Jesus did not say, blessed are the people who've made sense of everything. He did not say, blessed are the people who think they have it right on target every single minute of every single day of their lives. Jesus said, blessed are those who don't have it all together. Blessed are those who are not certain, and yet they move forward anyway. Blessed are those who are uncertain of themselves, and yet trust in God and act in faith in every moment that they are given. Blessed are those who know that they have missed the mark, and yet keep trying to find a better way with my help. And so I am thankful for this, because the Beatitudes are all about how we approach life and live out our faith by admitting to ourselves that there is a gap between who we are and who God dreams us to be. And thank God. Thank God, through Jesus Christ, that gap is filled. Our lives are filled in. Our lives can be made complete. The Beatitudes are about a relationship we have with Jesus Christ. Our lives are blessed because of the presence and love of God that is always with us, working within us, shaping and guiding our lives. And so I would add one more beatitude. Blessed are the placemakers, for our lives are blessed when we make a place in our hearts and our lives and our actions for Christ. Because what kind of blessings will we experience when making a place for Jesus in our lives? We might discover, for example, that we are poor in spirit. And what's the blessing here? In contemporary language, this reads, you are blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God to give peace and comfort through your life. So these beatitudes that we read and we hear are not just wonderful, pat little sayings, I want you to hear them today as prescriptions and a call to action in our faith life. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. It is lived out each day as we make room for God's love to be lived out. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. It is lived out in remembering in grief and loss that we are never alone, and as we are comforted, so we need to comfort others. As we realize the gap in our lives and the way we miss the mark, we give thanks for the comfort we receive, the guidance we receive to fill that in. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It happens when we put God's mission and God's vision ahead of our own. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. It is lived out when a student or anyone stands up stands up to end to people who are being bullied and stands up for them who are being bullied and teased. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy is felt when we forgive those who have hurt us. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God is lived out when we take that time each and every day to read our scripture and in so reading completely open our hearts to its message. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God, is seen any time that we let go of our grudges and we take the harder path and the narrow path to work for reconciliation in our families and in our communities. I hope you are seeing that the Beatitudes are all about making a choice, creating a place for peace and hope and grace in our hearts. Today, we remember the life and the work and the ministry of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., a man who mourned for the violence of racial tension, lived out of humility, hungered for righteousness, proclaimed mercy even to those who attacked him, called for a purity of heart to truly see God at work, and worked as a peacemaker until the day that he was assassinated. For he knew that when we make a place in our hearts and our lives for the very Spirit of God, 
for the Holy Spirit to reside within us. That spirit that we hear in Galatians of gentleness and love and joy and patience and kindness and, and peace and generosity to reside, that is when we make a difference. For the goal, as Reverend King proclaimed, was the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opponents into friends. It is this type of understanding goodwill that will transform the deep gloom of the age into the exuberant gladness of the new age. It is this love which will bring about miracles in the very hearts of men. For this beloved community that Dr. King spoke about, this dream is still ours today. For it is a dream still being worked out as we build communities where love and mercy and, and trust triumph over fear and hatred. The challenge for us this day is to open ourselves up to the powerful and holy presence of God in our lives and our world, realizing that the focus of the Beatitudes is on a present and a future reality. You see, the greatest blessing Jesus gives us is a relationship that accepts us where we are, but does not leave us there and moves us to a better place. In other words, no matter our present circumstances, situation, or difficulty, I want you to hear today you are not alone. The God who created us is not finished with us or our world. And so today, we may be here poor in spirit, mourning, hungering for righteousness, striving to be pure in heart, struggling even, and yet God is working in our lives. The God of grace, the God of hope, is with us today and tomorrow, offering and moving us forward to create beloved communities for all God's children. So how does living out the Beatitudes look like? Well, let me tell you about Sander Tesler. He understood what it meant, what the true power of faith and love can really do in the world. Tesla left Hungary for the United States in the 1940s during the worst of World War II. He was trained as a textile worker, and he's made his, his way to Spartanburg, South Carolina, which was the center of the textile industry. In the 1950s, after Brown versus Board of Education, Mr. Tesla became anxious as he saw the rise and the reemergence of the Ku Klux Klan. And he began to hear the racist rhetoric around him beginning to intensify. And he recognized it from his days in Europe, and he could not simply ignore it for the sake of business. And so he went to his foreman, and he asked, where was the racial tension the most hostile in the area? And the foreman replied that he wasn't sure where the worst was, but it couldn't get much worse than the area around Pine Mountain. So Mr. Tesla announced that day that he was going to build a brand new factory in Pine Mountain. When word got out, the white mayor of Pine Mountain came to see Mr. Tesla, asking if he planned to hire white workers, and he said, I'll recruit the best workers I can find, and if they're good enough, I will hire them. Shortly thereafter, the black pastor of a large African-American church came to him and expressed his hope that he would hire black workers. And again, he, he encouraged him, saying that I will find the best workers, and if they are good enough, I will hire them. In the end, Sander hired 16 new employees, eight white, eight black. In the mill, there was one bathroom, one set of showers. There was one water fountain. After initial introductions and a tour of the plant was complete, one white worker boldly asked, is this going to be some kind of integrated plant? Mr. Tesla replied, you're being paid twice as much as any other textile worker in the area. You can work with us here in the way that we work, or you can go somewhere else. Are there any other questions? There was none. All 16 employees started. It was a tense time. But eventually, the time spent together broke down barriers. Workers got to know one another as people and resulted in something unheard of in the South in the 1950s, a fully integrated plant with no violence, only workers who did their job, shared in each other's lives, and even became friends. All because Sander Tesler made a place for humility, for peace, for righteousness to grow and flourish. Truly blessed are the placemakers, the peacemakers, the justice keepers, the merciful and the grace-filled who work to build and dream of communities ruled by love. For the Beatitude calls us 
as individuals and as communities, as a community, as the people of God, where we all serve in the name of that divine love found in Jesus Christ, a love that calls us to risk to be open and vulnerable, a love that calls us to sacrifice for the greater good, a love that continually calls us away from self-absorption to selflessness, a love that continually takes us away from apathy to awareness of the needs and the hurts of our fellow human beings living in poverty or areas of violence, a love that calls us from inaction to action to stand up and speak out for peace and for justice, a love that leads us from despair to hope so that we know that in each circumstance of life and in those times of death and those times of grieving that we are taken care of for eternal life is ours as we trust and have that faith in Christ. This is the love that we make a place for as we this day surrender, as we this day submit ourselves to letting this love of God flow through us and transform us. Blessed are those who make a place in their hearts for Christ to continue working and transforming lives. Blessed are those who never give in and never give up hope. Blessed are those who look for every opportunity to use their gifts and their skills to be in ministry, to do as the prophet Micah called the people to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. Jesus' words spoken over two millennia ago still resonate today down the corridors of history. For the lesson we must learn is that if we continually reach for ourselves, it will remain elusive. When we reach for others and for God, we'll always find Jesus looking back at us as our hearts are opened. Together we serve. Together with God, we can work to create a fellowship and a beloved community and a world of love. Let that be our prayer. Let that be our mission. Amen. Let us stand, and in our faith we sing hymnal. 20, let's sing 2175, Together We Serve. We come now to a time in our service for prayer, and so I invite you as a community of faith, what are your joys you bring this day to praise God for? What are the concerns on your hearts for yourselves or neighbors or the world around us? What prayers 
would you like to offer in this time? Yes. Yes, prayers for the family of Naomi Monaco, who is here today. It is wonderful to see you here. Um, we pray for them. Um, Naomi passed away last week. Her funeral service will be this Tuesday um, with a visitation at 10 a.m., and the service will be at 11 a.m., followed by the committal service. And so I hope you'll come out to, to honor and celebrate um, Naomi's, Naomi's life. And so our prayers are with you in this time. Other prayers this morning. Yeah, Jeanette. Um, I just wanted to keep um, Sam in prayer for Naomi. And it will be some fun activities for her to have and lots of sports and stuff. And it's going to be great for them. And I thought I'd want to do it that they come here and they get dressed 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 and they get dressed. Her name's Janet? Okay. So prayers for Janet and her family, who is a high school friend of Ginger's. Um, and it was her, her nephew, her nephew who murdered his son. And it's being played out in the media, and it is making their grief a thousand times worse. And so prayers for that family in the midst of their grief. Um, let's lift up prayers for Ken and Patty Thiel, members of our church. Ken has MS, and it's progressing, and so that has its own challenges. But their son, Craig and Cassie, as Ginger said, I, I had the pleasure and the honor of doing their wedding here in Milwaukee. They live in New York City, but they came back and were in Milwaukee. They're having their first baby, so that's a great joy. It's a wonderful joy for them to welcome that new life in this time. Other um, prayers? Yeah, Wendy? Okay, prayers for your friend Kate, who lost her sister um, yesterday, who lost her sister. So, prayers for her in her time of grief. Other, uh, yeah. All right, so great joy for your friend Cindy, who has been in the hospital, very, very sick, and is coming home. And so that's a, that's a great joy. Yeah. Other joys on your hearts to share or other concerns that you may have to lift up in prayer? Okay. Um, as always, on the front of our insert is our prayer chain, those people that uh, we've been praying for. And um, so I invite you to hold these people in your, in your prayers. Um, you all got a card at the beginning of the service, and I invite you to fill it out because we love to know that you're here, but there's also a spot for prayers to be on our prayer chain. And um, we do take prayer seriously, and we want to pray with you and pray for you and, and be there with you. So if you'd like to be in our prayer chain and, and have us um, be there in that way, then I invite you to fill it out and put it in the offering plate when it, when it comes on by. Um, another prayer just for Marcia Peterson, who sent me an email that um, she's not here today because she's on her way to Minnesota. Her um, Aunt Marion passed away suddenly, and so her funeral is um, taking place. So she wanted prayers both for her family as they grieve this loss, but then also for her as she quickly packs up and is on the road this day driving to northern Minnesota, um, which is quite a drive. <laughs> um, any other joys that you have on your heart or any other concerns or prayers that you want to lift up 
name in this, in this time. All right, well, with all these prayers that we have named and those that are on our hearts, let us pause. Let us pray. Almighty, gracious God, we give thanks for this time to come and be together in worship, to be a people of prayer, to come and be connected to you in this time. As we come, O oh God, we um, remember the words of these Beatitudes and hear them, O oh God, as a, as a call, as a call to action in our lives, but also as a call in our lives to put you first, make room in our hearts, to truly see you at work in our lives and in our world. And so, God, we pray that that is what we will do in the midst of the times of life when we may be poor in spirit or mourning or needing that righteousness or whatever we face. Let us pause to see you at work. Let us remember those times of goodness. For, O oh God, as we come this morning, we come with, with prayers on our hearts. We pray for those who are grieving grieving a loss this day. And as we heard, we, we know that they are comforted by your presence. So we pray, O oh God, that we will as well be your hands and your heart to comfort them as we see those who mourn. We pray, O oh God, for, this, um, for those who have experienced murder and violence within their families, this that has shattered and, and broken them in, in a thousand, thousand different ways. And we pray, O oh God, for your spirit to be with them to help make a way and a place for them to find comfort and for peace, even when they may see that is not even possible in this moment. So let us, O oh God, never give up on hope and give up on peace and give up on joy. O oh Lord, we pray for those who are sick this day, who are in hospital or assisted living centers or nursing homes, and we pray for healing um, for them. We pray, O oh God, for our world this day as we, as we look out upon it. We pray for those areas of violence and of war, of injustice, as we hear your call to continue creating beloved communities of grace and of hope and of peace. As we submit and let our faith flow and let our faith connect us to you and to your gracious love. For we gather this day as a people with many joys, um, the joys of births that happen, a new life that is in our midst, the joys of friends that are coming home from the hospital, the joys of family and friends that surround us and those good times and those hard times and families that are with us, for our church family that prays for us and walks with us, and for your son, Jesus Christ who does indeed walk with us and journey with us and died for us and gives us new life and abundant life and eternal life. We give thanks for that. We come this day with these, these prayers on our hearts that we lift to you. But there are others we've not named, and so we take only just a moment to pause, let your Holy Spirit be with us as we lift you our silent prayers. O oh God, as we have lifted you our prayers while silent and spoken, hear us now as we join in one voice as we pray together this morning. Our Father. a few quick announcements. Um, first of all, today is our Wired Choir. This is our pre-K 
um, through fourth grade, and um, they're going to be right after worship in the music room. Um, our youth choir will be at 5, our V High School choir at 5.15, um, our confirmation classes tonight at 6, and um, our sanctuary choir will be tonight at 7. Um, there's no lunch bunch this Tuesday, um, because Naomi's funeral <laughs> is this Tuesday. Um, again, the visitation at 10, and the service at 11. Um, tai Chi is on Monday and Fridays at 11, and for those of you who, I love this line, wondering what the Tai Chi gang is up to, um, there's a one-time class for beginners, um, which is on Monday at 10 a.m., so it's in Fellowship Hall, and there's more in your, your insert about that. Remember to turn in your pledge card to support our ministries for 2014, and they're in the back of the church if you need another one. Um, also, we need our current addresses for our, our college students um, by January 26, which is next. So we are putting together care packages because we want to stay connected to our college kids that are, that, are, um, that are out there and others and our other young adults. Our winter coat drive is going on, the boxes and the, the narthex right out here. So bring your winter coats, your clothing in good condition. This will be running through the month of January. These are going to go down to St. Vincent de Paul meal site. And um, for those of you that have been to the meal site where we serve about 400, 450 people, there are people who come through who um, either live on the streets or who live in apartments that have no heat. And so these coats and clothes will go to those people um, who've been identified who um, are in that. So help support that of our outreach team. There's also two meal sites this month. Um, one is this Thursday, which is open to everybody, and we need desserts and fruit. The one on the 30th, our confirmation class will serve, but we still need desserts and fruit. The sign-up sheets are at the bottom of the stairs. And our drive-in movie, which is a lot of fun, will be on January 26th, so you come, you can watch a movie and, and eat, so that's fun. Also, I just want to mention as we talk about um, Dr. King that um, Bel Canto's doing a free concert today um, for a tribute to um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's tonight at 4 p.m., um, it's at the Holy Redeemer Institutional Church of God in Christ at 3500 West Mother Daniel's Way. <laughs> and I got that right, right? You got that right. All right. <laughs> That's a long name. So if you'd like to be a part of that tribute, that would be good. Um, also, our outreach auction is coming up, and um, I encourage you all to come. There's several tables out there. One is for teams, and one is for auction items. I don't know if anybody wants to speak to this, Marilyn or Lou or anybody just sign up <laughs> and bring friends. All right. So it's a lot of fun. All right. So this auction supports our outreach team. Their, their budget for the year comes from this auction. So what we raise is what we spend as a church community on outreach locally, statewide, nationally, and worldwide. So it really does touch a lot of people. So, and it's a lot of fun. So that's good. Um, also, this morning is one of our special Sundays. It is Human Relations Day. There's an envelope in here. Um, Human Relations Day is always around the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. This, um, when you give to this, this goes to, for community developer programs that help revitalize communities in areas of poverty and violence, community advocacy, and, and volunt voluntary services and work for at-risk youth, which basically means youth who are at risk um, in drug abuse or areas of violence. This, your offering helps to support them. There's even a testimony from one of, these, uh, one of those here. Um, locally, Solomon Community Temple, which is a United Methodist Church in Milwaukee, receives funding through the Community Developer Program um, as well. So, and we also support them by giving, by um, helping them hand out clothes, clothes in need to those who are in need. So, I invite you, if you'd like to support Human Relations Day, one of our six special Sundays of the United Methodist Church, you may do that. I invite us um, with open hands and open hearts to recognize our many, many blessings and that we really are a very blessed people. We give thanks to God for that. We'll invite our ushers forward to collect this morning's offering and invite Penny for another song. <laughs> i uh -huh. 
Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for all the many, many blessings that this day we give back to you. We pray for your blessing upon these gifts that we have given. May they nourish our ministries as we continue to have that sight and faith and reach out beyond these walls to share of your grace, of your hope, and of your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning comes from our green worship and song hymnal. It is hymn 3127, I Have a Dream. And so let us go forward to make that place in our hearts and in our lives for the blessings of these Beatitudes, so that we may be there with those who mourn, that we may people of meekness be with those hungering for righteousness, that we may act in mercy and be pure in heart and strive to see God in all we do, and that we be those peacemakers we are called to be. So let us go in peace, and let us live out Christ's peace and grace and hope and love. As we close our service and sing together as a community of faith, go in the peace of God. Mm -hmm.